we just do a simple kind of practice here in the lab of just taking these deep breaths um, as, as, a, uh, as a practice to let go of what's not serving. So if everybody could just be flat on the floor, back is upright as you can possibly get it. If you eat, give it a break for a second. Um, if you have the conversation, give that break too. Um, just follow me on three little green minutes. Exhale, so on three, breathe in, one, two, three, breathe in, and breathe out. This next deep breath, I want you to think about something that didn't serve you today, something that just kind of got you really wasting your time, right? When you think about it, like anything that gets you angry or upset or mad, why is it taking up space in your head, it's taking up your time on something that could be very positive in your life? So. We want to think about that. Just get it out of us right now. So whatever that thought is, as we breathe in, grab it, and as you exhale, get it up out of you. One, three, breathe in. One, two, three, breathe in. And breathe out. And this last breath. As we inhale, we're going to inhale and inhale again. And that's what we have to do is we have a lot of times. A lot of times, us as black men, the things that come at us, you know, we might take a deep breath. Just to try to get yourself squared away, and then you find that you have to take another deep breath. So that's what this practice is about. So we're going to breathe in once, and then breathe in again on top of that. And then when you exhale, I want you to make a good, loud sound as you let it go. And that's just going to reset the workers that you release. On three, breathe in. Breathe in again. Let it go. service who are no longer here in the earth realm in their transition to the spirit realm. So we want to invite them into the room by acknowledging them um, and we call their names. So first we're going to start with uh, those in your own bloodline. Those who are no longer here in this plane um, but who have transitioned but who would have made sure that you were in a space of positivity, uh, elevation, and seeing as many black men as possible who are on a high vibration, so we want to call the names of those individuals, and then we affirm it by saying uh, Ashe, which is which means so be it, which is synonymous with a man or word or right on, uh, whatever we prefer. So uh, I'll start um, with an ancestor from my own bloodline, and then everybody wants you to chime in and bring one of your ancestors in the room, or two, or however many ancestors you feel fit to bring to the room. Ashe. Okay. So I'll start with Casanova Wright, White Jr. I shave, and we just want to raise our right fist up. Yes. Solidarity, right? So Casanova Wright Jr. I shave. And now, for those yet unborn, the ones that we are doing the work for, the ones we are giving our life for and sacrificing to make sure that life is better for them, that burn don't feel as bad when you think about the people coming after us, right? So for the beautiful ones, those who are not yet born, we say Ashe. 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 So brother, brother, we say this is a safe space and a what space? Sacred space. Sacred space and a what space? A healing space. Safe, sacred healing space. Well, we, we say that this is the sacred space in America, maybe the world for black men, right here, right now. Um, because we know that in this space we're about nothing but love for one another and building our communities, right? But within that, we know that there's healing that's needed. So if there's anybody in this space that could use some black man lab love, just the brother saying, hey, I see you, I understand you, I'm here for you. If you could use that love, we say come to the front, we'll all get up. Come show you love and show each other love. Not ask no questions and say what's going on with you. We're just going to give you that love that you need. 
If there's anybody in here that can use that, please come to the front and we'll all show it to you. Facebook friends. I actually, I do computer hardware, networking, a little bit of everything with electronics, and I um, own my own business, subcontract for another, and just glad to be here. Hey, everybody doing? My name is Dontrell. I'm uh, 17 years old. I attend Tri-Cities High School. I was introduced by uh, Sam. <laughs> uh, yeah, you introduced me. Uh, I'm glad to be here as well. Um, my name is Alex Hunt. I'm 13 years old, and I came from the Boys and Girls Club. And how I found out about this is from Mr. Anthony. My name is Chris. I go to Kid Vision. My name, I'm 14 years old, and how I found out about this was Mr. Anthony. <laughs> My name is Trayvon White. I found out I go to Crawford Middle School, and the reason I found out about this is because Mr. Anthony. Right. In addition to being in the Black Man Lab, you got to be in another organization. Because Kwame Ture would tell us, organize, organize, organize. And so we're clear, if you want change in your life and our lives, we got to be in an organization. So we're going to ask them to give us about 90 seconds to uh, two minutes, 120 seconds of an intro, their name, and the space in which they do their organizing work. Um, and then we'll move from there. Cool? We'll start down here, and then we'll bounce it back. OK, so um, name is Allende Summers. I organize with the Project South. And I also am a board member of SICAR, Sapelo Island Coastal and Revitalization Society. Um, and that's an island off the coast of uh, Georgia. Um, one of seven that we have here in the state. And uh, we are doing work on maintaining and preserving our land. Um, and then in addition to that, we also preserve our culture and our traditions that come from the Gullah Geechee people. Um, here in Atlanta, where I work at Project South, we do a similar thing, but we also go down to the legislator um, and we do work in what is now known as Brownsville community, what we call Brownsville community but they call it South Atlanta. Um, yeah, and we do our best to make sure our community takes it back. Uh, good evening, brothers. Uh, Fred Parham, I'm with uh, the Black Man Lab to start. Uh, board member from the lab. Also one of the brothers of Let Us Make Man for a long time. And uh, been organizing even at work with the 100 Black Men of Atlanta. Um, and then organizing in my religious or faith-based community. Uh, and um, just been at it for, bro, mildly for about 16 years with Let Us Make Man, but before that we're in Cobra on the question of reparations, uh, the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America. And I've uh, been working with Allende with Sycars uh, earlier on. Uh, but I was just on a panel at Clark Atlanta uh, two weeks ago before spring break talking about this very thing, transforming the question of voting to civic engagement, which at its core includes organizing. So happy to join the panel. Um, peace. Um, my, peace. My name is Malik Youssef. I'm from Chicago. And um, I organize with, um, with the Young Black Republicans of America, and we do um, possibly some of the most important work um, in this country because we address subjects that, not, that aren't germane to the Republican Party, such as recidivism, um, such as environmental uh, health pro uh, proclivities and hazards. Also, I work with um, youth on different mental health issues, as to include but not limited to addiction. Um, I've been to rehab for everything except for nicotine and caffeine. 
and I have four counselors that I work with all the time and two therapists. So have overcome my addictions, got past my dislike for other men, and I'm here. My name is Tobias Smith. Um, I organized with Breaking the Chains with Shar Bates um, in Atlanta. Um, we go into different communities and mentor children, but also do programs in those communities to make them self-sustainable. And I also organized with the People's Action. Um, I started the chapter of the People's Action in Atlanta. It originated in Detroit um, with the same mission of making communities self-sustainable. My name is Dwayne Hirsch. I'm also from Chicago. Uh, been a registered member of the Nation of Islam, Assalamu alaikum, since 1993. And uh, so a lot of my work in, in organizing has been mostly, however, in business development and bringing people together through the networking spaces in business. I did that for 10 years running in Chicago before I became a hemp and cannabis industry pioneer here in Georgia. So for me, the organization is about bringing people together on business initiatives, uh, whether those be something that's already conceptual and happening or something that's developmental and needs to be brought out and expressed uh, in the future. So that level of economics is where I organize and also do mentoring for players throughout the uh, NFL, Canadian Football League, college football, and high school football. I'm also a member of the American Football Coaches Association and the National Coalition of Minority Football Coaches. Uh, question, again, there are brothers in this room who they operate in a lot of different spaces. And what are some of the fundamentals? If a brother is saying, they see a problem, right? Because that's what we—that's really what we're talking about. If we see a problem or we see a need, we organize around that. What are some of the fundamentals that you all believe are necessary to be an effective organizer in whatever space, right? Um, and then, if you could, how did you even start? Because sometimes we be stuck. You know, we like, I need to do something, but we be stuck. We don't move. So how do you get unstuck, and then what are the fundies to being an effective organizer? And y'all can start down there, whoever want to answer, move it around, and we'll open it up. As far as, uh, I would just say that as far as uh, getting unstuck, you unstick yourself, it's be and it is. You have to operate under what God commanded of you to do, uh, to take charge of your posts and, uh, and to and to literally just go out and do it. You know, I work with Malik every day and he talks a lot about the fact that whatever you're gonna do, you do it now. You just get into it. If, if I tell you what it takes to become a multi-Grammy winning recording artist, you might look at that and say, I could never do all of those things. But if you just get started today, you would work your way through each and every one of those processes. So it really is just don't think too hard about it. If you're passionate about it, just go. And if you want to uh, work inside of an organization and start to organize, it has to start with, uh, you know, seeking ye first the kingdom of heaven, being that that's the most pure thing. Whatever that organization is, you have to be pure about the cause of that organization in order to really commit yourself. So it has, so that way every act, every speech, every response that you give is coming purely from what you really believe and the passion that you develop. Otherwise, you're really not, you're taking up space for someone who may be more passionate and committed to that. So, yeah, yeah that was, that's strong. <laughs> um, I, I believe uh, compassion is one of the key elements to truly organizing because we're dealing with our people, we're dealing with people that have had the foot on their neck for a long time. So you're dealing with a lot of issues and you gotta be able to I think come into every situation with an open mind and, and an open heart to really truly serve the, the people the way that you can maximize it. You know what I mean? Um, as far as getting unstuck, I think he handled that. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to, you know, like me, when I moved to Georgia, I was, before I even moved, I was already looking at who was doing what 
in the community and who was aligned with what I wanted to do. And when I got here, I made sure I con landed with him. And actually, <laughs> through Norm Malik, is actually how I got connected to Shar. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really about setting your intentions, having an open heart, being compassionate, and being ready to serve. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'll say this, I'll, I'll be very brief. I'll give you a list of simple instructions that I use. This is not going to be ubiquitous for everybody. It's not a unicific uh, solution. But the first thing you want to do is organize your space. I'm not talking about fix your house and build and all that stuff. I'm talking about your internal space, the people that you allow through the threshold of your energy. Because that's going to inform you more than anything else, any religion, any group. That's the first group. The people that you choose to be around on an hourly, daily, weekly, monthly basis. Then from that, construct, start to construct your value chain. What is your highest value? If it's a whole bunch of girls, that, that, let that be that. And understand that's where you are. And then go from there and all the way down. That means you're not going to have a lot of male friends. Because nobody is like, bring the dude back to holler at all the girls. Nobody's saying, bring him back again. So understand that you're going to sacrifice male companionship. Understand what you're sacrificing to get what you want. You understand me? Organize those thoughts first and primarily. Like for me, loyalty is very high on my value chain, right under accountability. That's how, my, that's how I build my organizational structure inside myself. And I go to sleep and thinking, what serves my accountability? Who am I accountable to? How do I serve them? What manner and how much energy do I have to spend to get that piece of information back to me in an orderly fashion? So give, what's the sacrifice? Think those things first. Secondarily, think what you get back. And that's how you organize your thoughts and your brain will order itself. You think about it the night before you go to sleep, wake up with blood in your mouth, go after it. But you gotta do the nighttime thought first because your brain will keep that and it'll structure it at the top of the order in your hypothalamus. Thank you. This, you're in the best place you can be in your life right now. This right here is the best place you've ever been in your life right now. But you have to absorb it. It's up to you to absorb it at this moment. Wally's well, so right because what happens is you forget. You forget what you're tethered to. You forget it. It's, it then it, you, once you forget what you're tethered to, you forget what you belong to. And one thing led to another, but I never forgot. And I always make sure when I feel something pulling me back to 127th and Wallace, back to the wild hunters, I always look back and be like, oh, that's my people. Let me check in on all them. Because, of course, I'm thinking they should check in on me. Nigga, I'm out here. I'm on TV. What, what, what? But no, I'm, on, I'm the one on CNN. No, that's the incorrect thought. That's what we call the enemy. Some folk call the devil. Some folk call Satan. Some folk call the Iblis. That's the enemy that's going to lead you down a path that seems so smooth. But you're going down. It's just go, you're going to descend. You're going to have a declination in life. When Tobias called me and said, come here. I'm tired. I was in the studio till 6 this morning and then did business all day. He said, black men's lab. I said, I'm on my way. I'm late for work right now. <laughs> but you saying it, that because you will get over there on the other side. I text Travis Scott today because my spirit said, text Travis. See where he is. I said, I needed this, bro. I said, you owe, he owe one of my friends a lot from some shoes. I said, don't forget about Dre. Dre going through it. He said, got you. Now, Dre don't know I did that. Y'all don't know who Dre is. But just that tether, we got to stay linked, man. And you got to get through the things that make you look at somebody and be like, man, man that nigga, man, who he, man. Oh, that's the enemy, G. You don't know that's the enemy? It's trying to separate you? The most high don't want to separate you. It's unity. And then if you don't fit in, get yourself together so you can fit into this fist. Take off the stuff that keep you from fitting in. Take it off. You don't need it because you need to fit in with us. We us, man. 
And we got to keep that in mind. So when you said that, man, just, I, I just thought about 80, 80 people I know that need that pull. And I think that's what my week going to be. Thank you, brother. The places that I've been able to organize, I've been blessed to be, you know, born and raised here in Atlanta um, and from Georgia. And so connecting with people that are from the community is a little different for me because um, I'm connecting with people that I know. Um, so my accountability, especially as an organizer, when I go out to the community, this ain't a community. This my house. When I tell people when I was super young, I used to tell them, I said, listen, man, we, everybody, you can be from Atlanta. I said, but the trees know my name. It's different. Like I literally remember when that tree was this big. Now that tree over there, on that same side of the street, everybody just drive by just as a tree. But for me, it means something different. My grandfather, used, my great grandfather used to bring us uh, pecans from the trees the pecan trees that grow across the street from the Butler Street YMCA, right? The, the original Butler Street YMCA off of Auburn Avenue, right? It's a pecan tree right across the street from there. And it gets so heavy sometimes, the leaves, will, I mean, it'll, it'll lean over. So when you organizing, these are the things that keep me tethered, right? Again, we talk about accountability, we talk about that, right? Again, these are the concepts, these are the ideas but they have to become a practice, right. Yeah, yeah. right? You have to create a relationship with it. Those are just words, ideas, but it's a relationship that I have, right? I have an accountability to that tree, Come on, man. right? I know the tree that my great-grandfather used to feed us from in this place. So that was, took me down to uh, meeting uh, the brother Fred. Uh, we started going down to Sapelo off of the word of some elders um, here uh, who I developed a great relationship with, right? Um, and so then we went down develop. to develop, yeah. See, we, de on, we develop, develop, right? Because it's a, but you do it through accountability. It's a consistent check-in, right? It's the same thing that we do with our homeboys out on the street, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm from Atlanta, Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like not from the outskirts, none of that. I ain't from, you know what I mean? So being able to be in relationship with people, it's a consistent check-in, right? People check you, Come on. You, you know what I'm saying? And being available to be checked, Woo. right? So then you build relationship. So me and this brother down here, we are available to each other to be checked inside the spaces. So then when we go to these places, part again called the Gullah Geechee, this is the origins on the East Coast where African people were brought, right? They were brought to South Carolina and Georgia. That's right. And they came in and then they dispersed from out this way, yep. right? This is before the Louisiana Purchase, okay? So this, just for context, you all maybe have heard about the 1619 Project? Yeah. Okay, so understand that Sapelo Sound was occupied, the year was 1526, all right? So, but this, and we're talking about by the Spanish, right? So again, we're talking about people and communities that have been there for a long time, resisting for a long time, but not resisting for the sake of fighting. We don't fight, we build. That's what we do, we build relationships. We literally invented concrete, literally. That's where they, and so then they build it. And you see the evidence of it all throughout the Gullah Geechee. It's still there. So again, it's building relationships and relationships that you are accountable to somebody else. You're accountable to elders. I'm accountable to the culture and the elders that I have met along the way. Of keeping people around you that are on a similar path, right? It, it, we always said this, I would talk with our, with our young people, I'd say, if you got in a car with somebody and they were going to Henry County and you were going to the east side, would it make sense for you to even ride in the car with them? <laughs> Wouldn't make sense, right? But when I was doing criminal defense law, I saw it all the time. You riding in cars, then y'all ain't even going in the same direction. 
But where you end up is in the same place. Oh. And I meet you at the jail, and that's when I'm finally able to holler at you. Because your grandmama been hollering at you. Your dad, your, your, everybody been trying to talk to you. But now, I got your attention. But we're talking through the plexiglass. I got your attention. I say, man, why was you crying with them? You know where they was going, and you weren't even supposed to go in that direction. You walk around with a scholarship, and you try to hustle. You try to kick a door. It don't make no sense, right? So I just want to give you the context of who you rock with and how long we've been rocking. He's been on the path. We've been on the path. And it's the same path, just one in Chicago down in Atlanta. So that's what we're talking about. Find those brothers. Here's, here's what I'm going to say. So first off, peace, fellas. Good to see y'all again. Um, walking in, I'm expecting to see you and Marty. This brother right here, though, <laughs> first off, just about being tethered. This was maybe eight, nine years ago. I'm in D.C. I see he coming to town. Yo, come holler at my shorties. He show up. It's already, the Grammys were already there. So this brother speaks it, he lives it, and you see he's doing it. He allows himself to be held accountable. But the thing that I'll say about that, too, is, is because he knows his purpose. That's what you were just talking about. We have to know what our purpose is. We're all here for a reason, and I, I'm not here to be a lawyer, right? I'm not here to write music and be a poet. But what I am here to do is make sure that I holler at these young brothers, these young sisters, try to help them get themselves in order so they can find a way in this wicked world that we live in, right? This system ain't built for us, we all know it. The educational system's not built for us and we know it, right? But how do you find a way to navigate through that to find your purpose, number one, and then deliver for your people? You talking about the, the, the Gullah Geek? Man, come on, bro. We wouldn't even be here if, if folks gave up, right? So, wouldn't be nothing, right? Wouldn't be no culture, right? So you all, we all have to continue to work in and find our purpose, continue to build and organize with each other, find like-minded brothers. Like this room is a powerful place. This is my second, second time here. I was here last month. I had to come back. I'm here for work on a different project, but I'm like, yo, I'm gonna stop through the lab, bro. I'll be there, right? And I've missed it on sev several years. Cat's been doing it, and I'm like, oh, I'm out on Sunday, so I ain't gonna, I'm making my trips to be here on Mondays now because I see the power, right? And, 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 and again, we're talking about organizing. Again, it's about finding like-minded brothers, partnering up, letting go of ego, let cats lead when, when they're the, the leader. Like, Marty was like, yo, you wanna sit on the panel? I was like, what, what, what is it? He was like, organizing. I was like, ah, that's not necessarily my, my, my expertise. He's like, dude, you organize all the time. What you talking about? It's like, I guess you got a point. I do, but I, I didn't see myself in that way because that's not what I call myself to do, right? But it's what I'm doing. I'm organizing young people, right? At right now, man, I got two or three different projects that I'm working on. When I was here before, we were talking about um, public health, right? Organizing brothers to take care of themselves and their bodies, right? But then that's also financially, right? That's mentally, that's economic, like it's all spiritually. Health is, is broad, bro. It covers everything. And if you're only thinking about what you put in your body or how much you can lift, you're missing the point, right? So we gotta get organized around this, these greater concepts about what it is we need to be thinking about and what we need to be doing and focused on in order to push the needle forward and, and again, get in space and community with others, build and keep things moving because these folks out here, they, they ain't trying to let us live. I want to tell you a little, just one thing real quick about accountability. Accountability is something that's finite. You can count it, meaning that you can count your own value to other people. There's a price, there's a cost, there's a value, and there's a worth to every single thing in your life. That is called inventory. How many of y'all youngins, how many of y'all got a best friend? Best friend, best friend, okay, all right. Does your best friend put you in the best mood, in the best mind state, in the best position? If that's not the case, 
If that's not the case, you got the wrong best friend. Sometimes your best friend is the person that you don't really like. No, no, listen. Listen to what I'm telling you. Your best friend is sometimes a person you don't really like, but you get the best results from being around that. When we first started, we ain't had no cameras. We had no cameras. We ain't had no cameras. The only reason we're doing it now is just because there are folk out here that don't believe that y'all right, even right, exist. Right, right, right. They don't believe it, that 150, 100 black men could get together every single Monday and we ain't watching football, talking about no madness. They don't believe it. So we had to capture it to preserve it and show it. This is our history that we all a part of. Y'all understand? I know y'all been trying to tell people to come, but they haven't come. Isn't it the truth? Y'all done been in cat ear like, man, you should come, man. You should come. You should come. And they're like, man, I ain't going over there. That's some corny. Blah, blah, blah. But they ain't been in here. But when they get in, then they yeah, go when like, they get in here, okay. Inevitably, what do they say? when they? Why didn't you tell me this was like this? Right. Right? It didn't happen. I got a brother who's on the panel right now. <laughs> We've been trying to get him for four years. I've been trying to get this brother for he got. He's like, oh, shit, man. Why didn't you tell me this? Here we go. Question. Let's move. Good evening, gentlemen. I don't know who, who said it, but olders and elders was so profound. I want you to, to define each one, please. So simple, olders, you been here, right? You, you just aged, right? You, uh, like brother was saying, right? You, you took care of your body, you know what I mean? You did your weights and all the other things, and but that's it, right? Um, there's not much more you have to offer. Uh, elders, um, elders, they are rooted and have been tethered to what you know now as ancestors, right? So an example of that would be here, people who, uh, anybody went to Morehouse? All right, so we got Morehouse. All right, the first black, hear what I said now. The first black president of Morehouse is John Hope. Now, John Hope had a wife, Virginia Burns Hope. Virginia Burns Hope, and in fact, they met in Chicago. Yeah, John Hope and Virginia Burns Hope met in Chicago, all right? They came back to Atlanta. Well, they came to Atlanta. They had their first child in 1901. So. He became, who's the second president of Morehouse? Black, yeah. Come on, all right. Now, Benjamin E. Mays High School is down the street from where we at right now, all right? John Hope was his predecessor and also his mentor, okay? Now, he was also the first black superintendent of school, John Hope. Who do you think was the second black superintendent of schools or APS in Atlanta? You follow what I'm saying? So there's an eldership. He is my, both of them, right? I see those are ancestors. I went up by the time I came to earth, they wasn't here, right? But there's a man named Alonzo Krim, <laughs> right? Who got it from them. And when I'm saying got it from, I don't mean like, they happen to be in the same position. No, we talking about level of intention and accountability. He was accountable to that man. Do you see what I'm saying? So I, I give you that as a, an example and, and to define the difference between the eldership, right? Okay. Talk today, tonight, about being linked, right? And you're linked right now. We have to continue this link together. We have to stay together to build together. Only way we're going to heal our community. Repeat after me. I don't leave in this chain. I don't leave in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. I don't leave in this chain. I don't leave in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here.